Right. All I'm right. Ready. Sounds like one thing is unblocked. Very good. <laughs> well, well, Maeve, uh, Matt is, is held up. So as our new project manager, uh, partner, why don't you run the meeting? <laughs> Okay, what does Matt usually start with? So, uh, hey guys, <laughs> um, have there been, have we reached critical mass? That is the, I think that's fine. We've got the people that we need, right? Everyone's muted. <laughs> this is weird, yes. Michelle, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's have, weird. We reached, it's have we reached what? Mute. Critical mass. Have we got enough people to start? I'm conscious of everyone's time. That's what Matt also always says. Um, okay, it's so. It's like minutes long, right? So I think like, so I think um, just the one thing that I know that we need to mention is um, the um, check boxes. Um, I think maybe Quinton, you can speak to that check boxes and making sure that people have um, maybe in QC at the stage or when they're labeling new um, check boxes, just to ensure that those check boxes are set to yes. Um, but otherwise, I mean, any other blocks that we need to talk about at this stage? If anybody has information or experience building CSS, I'd love some help with that part. I'm not sure if anybody on the call does do that or not. But uh, oh, Quentin, if you're just adapting my CSS, maybe I should help you. Well, I'm trying to adapt it into the bootstrap theme too, but that might be enough though. Yeah. I also do CSS, but okay. depends. I haven't worked with, as, as you saw last time, I haven't, I haven't worked with bootstrap that much, but I can play around. But if, but if David's into it, yeah. Yeah, I want to keep you high value uh, programming time uh, doing that. I can, I can fiddle with colors. Okay. Sure, sure. I mean, <laughs> UI is also important, but I hear you. Um, okay, so there's actually, only... it doesn't seem like there's any roadblocks, right? I mean, is no one, there's no bottlenecks anywhere. And then maybe we can talk about how far you've gotten, um, Quinton, like you've gotten the TRO um, up and running to some extent, right? Yeah, and also for everyone, I just threw the link to the draft in there that also links to Quentin's TRO. Okay. I'll just show briefly. So this is, this is kind of what I'm trying to work with with the CSS. So I'm trying to get the spacing to look right. So I got the colors that are from, from here, from um, the version that David did and trying to get the spacing right. And this changed the alignment. So I, what I used is a bootstrap theme generator to get this. I, probably it's just enough to just copy over the, the colors we need and not do a whole new bootstrap theme and that would fix some of these things. Yeah, like, it's just a 60 pixel high uh, header. I can give you the RGB. All right, so I might just try like changing just those CSS elements that matter and then someone else can finish implementing the things that are missing, basically. I wanna just try to get this background color. It looks right when I just do the logo. So how you get the background color right is by right clicking on the element and saying inspect element. You know what, you can inspect any freaking element and just use the you know color picker. When you click on the color, yeah. you can do a color picker and do mm -hmm. a drop and then it'll tell you the value. No, I, I yeah, I mean, I got all the colors in there yeah. in the right place. It's just when I tried to put them into the theme generator, it changed more things that I didn't want it to change, like this vertical height of this and the centering. So it might be as simple as just copying over the only the, the things I want to change, which are really just the colors and probably the fonts. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Um, then maybe we can talk about workflow just quickly. I think that um, we proposed not, oh, hey, Matt, you can run the meeting now. No, 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 Maeve, you don't get out that easy. <laughs> um, I just, I think that um, we can go through the workflow quick sticks and just say, because we've adjusted some of the cards, we haven't actually adjusted the cards yet, the columns, um, but just proposed what's a, maybe a, a more efficient workflow um, and just something that's easier for new volunteers to grasp when they're moving their cards through Trello, especially if they don't have experience in Trello. Um, so we've been working on that, Michelle, Matt, and myself. And then also with input of David and Quentin. Um, I don't know how much we actually need to go into that or whether we can just publish what we've got and maybe put comments on tomorrow. I don't know. No. I mean, <laughs> I, think, I think there's a, there's a quick 
way to do that. I mean, we can try to just do it quickly. And if people don't yeah. understand, then we'll do it a different way tomorrow. Well, what I can do okay. is I can pull up our, um, I can pull up our overview, maybe. Sure. Um, but I'm it's, yeah. I'm just going to share my screen and then we can, get, you can see what it looks like. We can just um, cover the headings, though, I think, for now. Yeah, this thing, right? Oh, whoa, holy moly, I didn't even see this. This is amazing. Okay, so it starts out with people submitting forms. And then instead of having unprocessed forms, we're going to have add fields to PDF. So that basically each column is going to be an action. So when there's something in that column, people know that that needs to be done. So, and then while you're in that column, you're doing that. Once you've finished adding the fields, you then move it across the label fields and then across the quality check labels. Um, then you get to upload and run form. And if you're fine with that, if you get through it, no problems, you can then take the card to do quality check code. If you do struggle with that, you take it to the SME and the SME will then assist you. If you don't know where to find the SMEs, you can just ask on Slack. And then the SME will then add it to that column. And then it just goes through there. And then that's this, I see the thing is I think most volunteers are going to be working in this area, right? I think, am I correct in saying that? I think you can get some help with the quality control and yeah, um, and we should be able to be through soon. And we should be able to bring more SMEs on board too as volunteers. So, as I said, I'm not sure if um, Noelle's on this call. Uh, yesterday, she, when I was speaking to her, she said that she's got experience with guardianship, and I know that guardianship is the next batch of forms. So I said to her that she would be greatly appreciated in that um, as an SME in that, um, you know, because I know that the burden on on Kate and Caroline and the family law SMEs are quite, it's quite high at the moment because everything is like, you know, I'm asking them a lot of questions. So um, ba basically the, the proposal was to, um, the Trello board is currently, um, so I've got so many things open here. Um, the Trello board is currently a bit messy. So we were hoping to, um, to just, Relabel the columns or delete columns that weren't necessary. Um, so, so for example, this unprocessed forms, move all of these unprocessed forms across to add fields to PDF and then just delete this column. Um, and then the resources column would have where to submit new forms um, and then also just an easy access for all the resources that we've gotten, like the tutorials and the um, documentation. Um, and then it's mainly these fields that need to change, these columns, I mean. So we would get rid of this column and move those to quality check post labels. Those are the only two real amendments. If they're done, okay. if they're not done, then they need to go into add fields, so if, PDF and label fields. Yeah, yeah, so I'll go through those and check. And then if they aren't labeled yet, I'll put them in label fields. If they are labeled, and um, they'll go into quality check. And also adding, um, adding stuff like high priority, high urgency and also simplicity, like how simple they are to, to create, to, to automate. Um, those are new tags we have. We also have a tag for um, a standalone form so that you can say if this one form isn't dependent on other forms. Okay, so these are the, you can just go, you, I don't know if anyone, everyone knows how to get there, you just go labels. Um, but I, I would feel, you know, because um, I would feel a lot more comfortable I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> I would feel a lot more comfortable um, with SMEs making those calls for. Um, yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, so I think. For sure. I just think before they start get going through, there might be a first column that goes tag in, you know, Trello, tag in Trello, so that they get those forms so people can prioritize based on those things. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. So, okay, so we have. With, so, with, so, with, sorry. With family yeah. law, basically every form that's on there is an emergency form. So it's kind of, I, I think the 209As are the most urgent because they relate to safety, but really every other form that's on there is part of an emergency action. So it's kind of just pick so your can, battle. Can you, can you make them medium urgency because they aren't the most urgency? And then um, we will have to order, we will order medium urgency by amount of simplicity. Because I'm that just thinking. Be the, what? Sorry. 
sorry, I was just thinking a comment that we had earlier was that um, forms like defendant modifying an abuse order. Yeah, we put that on there kind of out of fair because we put the plaintiff's ability to modify on and that is, it is a pretty simple form and it, it seemed in the interest of fairness if we were doing plaintiffs, we had to do defendants. Yeah. But in, that, in terms of priority, I mean, that would be an example where that could be like a medium priority yeah, because you're, you're priority wanting to protect. Form, but then it's very simple. I'm with Michelle on the simplicity. You, you, can, you, can put, you can put high or high priority on there, but you, you said you want the 209 to be highest priority. So that is red is highest and, and orange is next down. So okay. that, that, that is, that's medium relative to the highest. Once 209 is gone, we can change all those to the urgent ones, to the red. But at that point, if we have like five forms that are all red, then it's by order of simplicity because that's how we can get them out fast. So what comes after red is orange? Sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Red, orange. You'll see right. when you look at the labels, they'll say medium priority, medium urgency. Okay. Not medium priority, medium impact, medium urgency. This is a two-factor grading system. One is on how much impact the form will have and one is on how urgent it is. Okay. Okay. Um, and then another expert that are interested in housing, um, Henry, who's on the call, I think he said that I was called, contact somebody, McKinsey, um, just to ask for, but I mean, we only have the TRO for the housing, or am I mistaken? I think we could probably put in some more housing forms, but um, I, so the TRO we have right now is specific to three areas, someone being locked out, somebody having, um, their utilities cut off, and then it just says other breach of quiet enjoyment, but there's not a lot of room to write, so I think we might want a, a more general form. And there is one that the housing court uses. This one that we are automating is from Mass Legal Help. So we might, might want to use a different version of that at some point. That can do more just like a write in your whole story, kind of. Okay. It's less guidance, but it will let advocates use it. Also, we have to make sure that when we order, so I'm ordering them vertically in order of priority, but if there are ones that go with each other, they should be in a block vertically with each other so that they get taken care of together. Would it be helpful if I added to like the comment sections of those four? Because I, I made that checklist that I posted like a long time ago on the, the Slack that I imagine just like got buried. Lost. Would it be helpful yeah. if I put in the comments of the Trello cards? like? Just copy the checklist, the relevant checklist. Do you know what I mean? Sure. I, I think the, I think the fact that they all if they if they all start with the same thing, then we can match them up that way. Okay. But that's the only way I have of matching them up. I'm gonna have if I'm going in to look at the check marks mm -hmm. of everything to see if this name matches up with that, that's gonna take a fair amount of time. Uh, partially because of my problems with mm -hmm. the visual issues. So uh, just, so maybe other people would be faster. Sorry, go ahead, Maeve. Um, you know, being math, I'm cognizant of everyone's time. So we've reached <laughs> 15 minutes. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that we need to cover or if people need to jump off, then, I mean, um, I just wanted to talk about the um, tutorial and onboarding new volunteers and then just that little handbook that I'm going to try and put together tonight. And then to give people some context, I think we were hoping that we would be able to have sort of a soft, not quite launch, but um, the, the, the court is, I don't want to say they're dragging their feet, but they're, they're slower than I would like. Um, so what I want, uh, our, our minimum viable product idea is to basically get the site up with the single TRO form so that we can say, hey court, here's some stuff. It's ready to go. Just tell us where to send it. And then they'll have to tell us where to send it. Um, and then also that's the step where we ask for translation on that first set of stuff. And then just to really quickly uh, show you where we're at. I mean, we're really close. Um, I'm gonna do a quick share screen here. Um, so here's uh, what we've got. It's, um, this was the wonderful stuff that Rose put together. Um, I had to add in all this responsive, these responsive elements. Um, so wow, that looks freaking awesome! It changes while it responds. Rose, we need her on this in this. <laughs> oh no, she's here. she was great. She did uh, she did the mock up, and then I took it over and 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 breathed uh, life into it. Um, then we've got the housing here, um, where we can see the different categories again, and I had to build in the responsiveness there as well. 
Um, I'm just realizing I need to actually change that because it's not as responsive as I'd like. Are you I'm using just now right Flexbox, Flexbox or are you using? <laughs> I'm using, uh, this is all artisanal crafted CSS. Um, oh, okay, so, well, <laughs> but not, okay, so not Flexbox. I'm just, CSS, Flexbox is CSS. So, yeah. but it's new CSS that isn't compatible with a lot of old browsers. So. Yeah, so this is this is all handcrafted stuff because the the share she gave over we couldn't just download the elements um, unless okay, we wanted to so, pay for something. Um, so it's media but, queries. Uh, yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, uh, for the responsive elements. Um, so we've got this. This links right over to Quentin's uh, to the TRO. Um, we've got an about us. We've got a terms. I'm going to work on the language on that. Um, and I'm going to do the copy editing in this and hopefully get this all to you by tomorrow morning so people start kicking the tires. Um, I still need to add some elements like the drop down. Um, there's one thing I wanted to make sure I said now. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, Is there a page to get involved? We have the uh, uh, about us and that does tell us back to where we want to do. Um, we can actually, in the copy, I might, um, I'm going to sort of play that up in the about us. Um, and now I'm trying to remember what it was I was going to say, but I can't remember. So I'll just have to tell you all later when I actually remember. Um, you were going to send something or? I'm going to have folks look at this after I do the copy editing and do some other stuff. You can, you can play around with this now. There's a link into the Slack. Um, oh, Quentin, I know what it is. The, the, the S3 bucket doesn't seem to update the server very frequently. So I'm still seeing there the content that I uploaded like a long time ago. Um, a long time ago. Mm. Well, before this call. Um, <laughs> okay. So that here, that example, was pretty long ago, you know. So that was, you know, so here's it. It hasn't updated the CSS, even though I can ascertain that the CSS was updated. Um, so this is <laughs> that's what it looks like when the CSS isn't updated. Um, but yeah, so that's that. The HTTP comes from a CDN. So okay. Um, this SSL I mean, so that. So it's just cached somewhere and it'll might be more aggressive than we need it to be. But maybe if you might be less aggressive than direct S3 bucket URL, let's see if that is updated. Um, if you have that handy. I don't want to take everyone's time to do it. But yeah, I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I don't want to share screen on everything. Uh, okay. Last thing I want to do is share screen on the console and give something away. So, um, okay. but yeah, I'll get stuff out to folks. Um, so then just in terms of priority or, you know, making sure that everyone has um, to know what they're supposed to prioritize here. Um, I know Matt's working on the 209A. Do you need any assistance specifically there, Matt? I'm going to run through that wizard that I sent you, um, just trunking that code up a little bit and see if I can get it to run better. Yeah, I think, um, I guess the short answer is I don't know. Um, I'm getting the 209A complaint up and running. And I think the real challenge, um, a, a challenge that I think I'm going to need some input from like Quentin or Michelle or someone else on is how to link these 209A interviews together in a way that doesn't mess with what the wizard has done. Um, or yeah, so because I think, you know, we, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think even the the MVP for the 209A, the interviews are, will be a package, Quinton, or are we not envisioning that? Like, because there's no such thing, no one would ever just click on page one of a 209A and fill it out. Um, right. It, it would not get accepted if they did. Um, and it's also not gonna help the court to just get the page one of the complaint and then the affidavit and then maybe not two of the other documents. So we're going to just work these two forms through. And I think <clears throat> we'll, at least this week, those two topics anyway, I think we'll learn a lot by doing that. Um, but my idea was we're, each file right now is basically one attachment block. We can keep that structure and then just kind of put a wrapper around it. We don't use that ending download screen that we have built in there right now. We just have one that lists all the forms. And then we have some other logic block that will trigger collecting all of the forms in order. Does that make sense? Uh, sort of. Yeah, it does. It, in theory, it does. Um, okay. 
it, I guess what I need to know from you and um, I, I assume Michelle or, or whoever else is going to be working on that more sophisticated process is what, what can I do? Because I have time to work on that, the coding piece now, what is most helpful to you if you guys are going to be able to jump on this? And I don't, I'm not volunteering anyone for anything. So I'm just inferring. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to speak to it? I mean, I have a couple ideas, but you can speak to it, Quentin. I, um, the sound got distorted, right? When you said the most important thing, I think, sorry. <laughs> he said, what, what, what is it that he could work on to help with? Like right now in the, the code side of things. In the, the back end, I, th I think the most important thing is to get this form and we'll be able to add some more things to the back end interview generator is that kind of what you mean no i guess uh, it, uh, how can you best be of service uh, you you and michelle from working on like the structure of the wizard and knowing how it's all put together i think have mm -hmm. a much better right you you probably have ideas about how you're going to link all this stuff up right um and so what i don't want to do is spend a whole bunch of time on the 209A forms, finessing them in a way that ends up being thrown out because it doesn't fit with whatever idea you have to throw them together. I suspect um, nothing you do about the interface is gonna mess up anything we wanna do to link them together. If you can keep an eye out for variable names that are repeated and make sure that they are supposed to be repeated or variable names that are separate, you know, but that should be the same thing, that would be good to edit, but you'd have to put them through the wizard again. So, or sure. do it by or just or do it by hand. I think or, or do it by hand. That's true. I think it's faster to do it by hand in VS Code at that That's point. True. That's um, true. Um, and I guess, okay, sorry, Michelle, I interrupted you. Sure. No, I mean, another, if you're not work, if if you are working on the 209s, which I think is a great priority, but if you're not working on those, um, if you want to look into unit tests of the okay. code that we have, that would be incredible. And then this um, is, so. oh, sorry, unit go test, ahead. no, unit testing reminded me, we, we want to do an accessibility testing, but we don't have a procedure for that. Yeah, uh, can you link some resources of what you're looking for? Um, yeah, I can, but I only <laughs> sort of have one. The Trello has nothing right now. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, um, I also, in the kind of like um, descriptive workflow, I haven't put anything about accessibility testing. I just talked about moving the card. And so what we want to do is, I'm going to drop this in the Slack. Um, I couldn't look up the unit testing documentation this morning because GitHub was down for maintenance. <laughs> I know that was throwing us. We actually uh, were were like, serving some pages for there, I was and like, then we let's decided to do, down and do it. Yeah, we decided to do uh, to serve them from another location in case this is a uh, thing that continues to happen. Yeah. Well, you know, I suspect they're trying to work with the new load. Yeah. So I'm just looking about like it's uh, I don't know what time it is. It's like five minutes until whatever the end of the hour is. Um, and Twelve. in the East Coast. Twelve. Yeah. Um, so I think if, you know, if there is, is anything else urgent that we need to mention, One, I mean, yeah. um, then maybe now, otherwise we can just wrap this up and go into Slack. Yeah, I think that, that probably sounds good. Everyone, you're doing great. This is, this is, I am just con constantly amazed every day by how much everyone is doing. And I know I sound like a broken record, but it's because it's true. So. Your broken record is a beautiful song. Thank you. <laughs> Well, all of this is a beautiful song to my ears. Um, and hopefully we'll get this out soon and start helping some people. Sure. Yeah, I think oh, the, the key is that if you're stuck, if you need help, um, you know, especially with those urgent ones too, and I and the housing perhaps, just please, you know, either reach out to me and then I'll try and reach out to the other volunteers or just generally on Slack because we don't want it to be bottlenecked at this stage. You know, I think it's so important, to, you know, as you said yesterday, David, like to get something up. Um, I Okay, go ahead. Um, oh, sorry, Michelle, go ahead. It was unrelated, so you go first. Uh, one idea I have, Maeve, is that the 209A um, complaint page one is sort of my private fumbling through the dark. Um, 
and once I, you know, once I've done enough of that, that I feel like I understand enough of the process to be helpful to someone else, which I think will be on the next form, maybe I can either, I'll either stream it like Quentin did, or I could get on a call with you and just walk you through it in a more personalized way. And then we can start fantastic. training people up. Quentin, do you want to do a shadow where Matt and I are both there looking at what's going on with the form? Like where adjustments are made and how we adjust to things that weren't automatable, that kind of thing. Um, so I tried to do that on the live stream as much as I could, but another, okay. yeah. It was very specific though, because we had to go through everything that you've done with the form. There wasn't a like, these are the major things that, you know, have to be taken and have to be watched out for. Yeah. Um, yeah. I tried Just, to put those into a card on the back end dev. So it says potential backports, which really should be written. Potential backports. Okay. Maybe got it should it. be changed. What would be a better label for that? Uh, processing an, uh, a YAML. Processing a wizard, a generated interview. Processing a generated read, read interview. This before you start coding. <laughs> uh. So, I mean, some of these are things like, oh, I'm going to fix that in the generator, and I haven't yet, but That's those are yeah. they're just a couple things that have to be done. I'll take, I'll take a look at the back end Trello. I know one thing I was having trouble with, and, and then I'm going to stop because this is quickly becoming too in the weeds for this call, I think, um, is uh, just with the behavior of defendants, right? Um, and DocAssemble looking, you know, it's obviously using the grouping mechanisms of DocAssemble and for whatever reason, the, mm -hmm. the way the variables are working in my interview right now, it's not, I, I, it's not happening. So I've had to like, just comment out some functionality and I don't, I want to make sure that doesn't screw things up down the line. Um, yeah, well, let's, let's talk about that later. Matt, yeah. So I can see what, what exactly you mean. So one thing is what I did is I manually, so it has a place where it asks for plaintiff. Mm -hmm. defendant and I just know that on that form the plaintiff is the user and the defendants the other party so I just I have a line in my code block that says plaintiff equals user and defendant equals other party yeah does that figure that, yeah. what you were trying I, to make? I, I totally can figure I can totally figure well, out how, to get how like about that. we we save this for later because like yeah, nobody great, great plan. and I want you to look plan at the PR, uh, uh, Quentin. Okay. Yeah, I was like, what are you pointing at? <laughs> <laughs> um, and David, the, what, I, I don't know if I, rem I didn't know if I remember to tell you at least one or two of the links on the, like getting involved with the project page are not leading to the Slack channels like they say they do. Okay. They, that was, sorry, that's what I was gonna mention as well. Those might've expired. Maybe I need to find the new invites. They lead uh, to like I'm somebody's just bio filing. page. Okay, I'll I'll look into that. <laughs> um, I think maybe compiling you that. Sorry, compiling that um, uh, handbook. I was also just checking, like clicking through the links and making sure they were going to where they were going, and some of them um, aren't. So um, maybe I can also just highlight which ones are problematic, um, and then Sounds we can good. find the correct link. Sounds awesome. Okay. I think right. that's enough for tonight, if, if you know the Slack. I love how it's night for you. Uh, <laughs> Maeve and Matt, you want to... <laughs> yeah, this is all for... That's all Maeve, for. Maeve and Matt, you want to uh, hold on for a second, and we'll just touch base, and then everyone else go. All right. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody.